Welcome back to Thinking to Infinity, where we examine our world from an eternal perspective. First off, I gotta say, I was absolutely blown away by the response that we got from the launch of this channel. So thank you so very much for watching. Please do continue to share and like and subscribe. Your support is the plutonium that fuels my apologetics DeLorean. Nerd alert! So thankful praying hands or high five or whatever this emoji is right here for all of you guys. You keep watching and I'll keep on tackling more of life's big questions like, does pineapple belong on pizza? Oh yeah, I'm one of those people. But today, we're not debating toppings. No, we are talking about the origins, origins of, of, of the universe. 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 And when a Christian starts talking about cosmology, it's not too long before you get the science question. Do you not believe in science? Actually, I love science. It's impossible to convey how immensely helpful science is to humanity. I mean, without science, we'd still be bleeding people dry with leeches to cure tonsillitis and believing the earth is flat. Well, most of us. Come on, guys. I'm talking real science here, not the snake oil for profit drug cartel funded by corporate interests that the scientific establishment has turned into. Oh yeah, I said it. True science and faith aren't at odds. In fact, I believe they work together quite well. Well, the Christian faith anyway. Some ancient civilizations had some pretty messed up creation stories. The Egyptian god Autumn story? That one's extra cringe. But. Don't science and the Christian faith also disagree on how the universe was created? Let's see, shall we? Popular thought among human being persons is that it all started out with the Big Bang. It was big. It went bang. It was a big bang. And everything that now exists came out of it. Now, that's obviously a gross oversimplification of the scientific explanation, but I'm not an astrophysicist. I'm a professional musician and amateur comedian pretending to be a theology-based social media influencer, so bear with me. The short version is, stuff didn't exist, then stuff existed. Science and religion are hanging together so far. Easy enough. No universe, then something happened, and there's our universe. Now, please allow me to explain the difference between something and nothing. I know, it sounds ridiculous that I have to, but it's going to be really important as we go because, as we'll see, even world-renowned scientists seem to get tripped up on it a lot. Something is, well, something. Aww. It has mass, it takes up space, it's observable and measurable in the physical universe. Nothing, on the other hand, is nothing. It's the absence of anything. Something is something, and nothing is no thing. Everybody still on the bus? Stephen Hawking was a world-renowned, super de duper brilliant scientist. Some might say the smartest guy on two wheels. He offered his own idea on the beginning of the universe, which he said left no need for, or possibility of, God. He suggested that before our universe existed, all the universe's positive and negative energy was in a perfect, infinitely dense stasis. But a flux in that energy caused a chain reaction resulting in the explosion that birthed our universe. So, we should listen to the brilliant scientist, right? To be fair, he also claimed in multiple debates that the Higgs boson particle would never, ever, 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 ever be discovered, and he was proven wrong just a few years later. It also doesn't take a genius like Stephen Hawking to tell you that Stephen Hawking's suggestion is just rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. This does not solve our problem. Energy is something. A flux is something. Where did that energy come from? What caused that flux in energy to initiate the Big Bang? We're still playing, so then where'd that come from? It quickly becomes evident that the laws of physics, which every physical thing in this universe obeys, can't give us an answer to how this universe came into existence. Everything in this universe has a beginning. Everything in this universe has a cause. We've never seen fully developed materials with mass just erupt out of nowhere. Imagine with me. A crate. A big crate. Bigger. Bigger. Let's say big enough to fit the entire solar system inside. But it's completely empty. If you seal that crate up and launch it out into space, what would you expect to find inside if you open it up in 10 years? Or a thousand years? A million years? 70 billion years later. What would you expect to find in there? A new star system? New life forms? The Epstein client list. Uh, what's in the box? You'd expect to find nothing, right? 
You wouldn't expect anything to just spontaneously erupt into existence inside of that sealed box of nothing. Why? Because that can't happen. That defies the laws of physics, science, which state that everything has a beginning or a cause. Physics can be such a buzzkill, man. It's like, oh, everything has to have a beginning or a cause. Can't we just have one thing magically appear out of nowhere? Come on, physics. Have some fun once in a while. Similarly, our universe could not have just erupted out of absolute nothing. That simply doesn't make any sense. Unless you're an atheist scientist who needs it to make sense so that you're not faced with the moral implications of the existence of God. I'm not saying, I'm just saying. We've also never seen new matter being created from an explosion. Quite the opposite. Explosions destroy structures in order. They don't create it. Even with the magnitude of energy that gets released from exploding stars, we can see that that energy just moves around other created matter. It doesn't create new matter. So, what's the most logical explanation? That this universe was created by or from something that doesn't have to play by this universe's rules. Or someone. Infamous cold case detective J. Warner Wallace makes a really solid argument on this point in his book, God's Crime Scene. Great book. Highly recommended. In order to determine the cause of the crime, an investigator needs to gather evidence and look for clues. If you are a detective and you arrive at a potential crime scene and find a dead body on the floor, a gun in that person's hand, one bullet hole in the guy, no other people in the room, and the only way out had to have been through a door that could only be locked from the inside. You might have all the evidence you need. You could probably close the case without going anywhere else. But if there's no murder weapon, and a trail of bloody footprints going out the door, you can't seriously expect to solve this crime without leaving that room. You have to go somewhere else to get the answers you need to solve this case. Similarly, the evidence we see in the universe, based on everything we know about science, points to a cause beyond this universe. A cause that existed before this universe did. So the Big Bang doesn't contradict the idea of a creator. In fact, to quote one of my favorite apologists, Greg Kokel, a big bang needs a big banger. I think that obvious truth often gets ignored by the scientific community because, as we mentioned in our last video, scientists seem to forget that science is only equipped to observe and interact with natural physical things. That and an outside the universe cause often gets lumped in with the notion, which some Christians believe, that the earth is only about 6,000 years old, based on a particular interpretation of the Bible. It's right. We're interpreting the Bible literally, which is exactly how we should, I think. Other and Christians believe there were dinosaurs on Noah's Ark, you know. Not now. Crikey. Other Christians believe that the earth is much older, based on scientific evidence like radiometric dating and the vast amounts of time required for light from distant stars to reach our planet to be visible in the night sky. And cosmic microwave background radiation tell them about quantum physics and time dilation However hypothesis. old it is, we'll address those questions in another video. Here's the thing. Regardless of whether the Earth is young or old, the fact remains there had to be a cause beyond the natural universe to create it. The age of the Earth doesn't change that. So, while it is an interesting debate to have, it doesn't impact the core question of how our universe came to be. Now, some people might still argue that we don't need God to explain the universe's existence because maybe it's always been here. Maybe the universe is eternal. Well, that's a bold claim, my friend. Saying the universe is eternal is kind of like those women who keep celebrating their 29th birthday. We all know what's really going on. And at one time, some scientists did think it was eternal. But physical evidence informed them that wasn't true. The universe is expanding, which means it started from somewhere. And many scientists say they can even pinpoint it. They even dated it. Why don't we have a holiday to celebrate the universe's birthday? So the eternal universe is out. Some other folks are going to go multiverse with their explanation. But come on, man. There's literally the same level of evidence for that one as there is for the Tooth Fairy's invisible twin sister. Look, at the end of the day, whether you believe in God or not, it's clear that the universe had to come from something outside of itself. And when you start to explore what that something could be... Unlimited by time. Infinitely powerful. Incomprehensible knowledge of structure and form. It starts to look a lot like the God of the Bible. So, while the question of how the universe was created can be a complex and contentious issue, the evidence ultimately points us to an outside cause. And that cause, I believe, is God. As Christians, we don't have to be afraid of science or the questions that it raises. 
Instead, we can embrace it as a way to better understand this world and have some good conversations with others who are looking for answers to the same questions. Thanks again for watching. Please share this video with a friend, subscribe, like, and ring the bell to find out when new videos are being released. Remember, eternity is on the line, and that lasts forever. I hope you choose wisely and keep on thinking to infinity. Stephen Hawking, the brilliant mind who kept rolling over the laws of physics. <laughs> I can't say that.